Okay, so today we're going to be talking about sizing piping and tubing systems in a manifold application. I already have a YouTube video up concerning the um, regular Schedule 40 type of piping application. So this is different because we're going to a manifold. The first thing that we want to do is from our diagram we want to determine what the longest measured run or the LMR is of the system itself. So when we look at this application we have the longest measured run measuring from the outlet of the gas meter. We have a 10 foot section of Schedule 40 pipe. We also have a 70 foot section, if you will, of tubing over here to this 60,000 BTU per hour appliance. The big thing we're looking at is just to ensure that we have the longest actual appliance away from the gas meter itself. So in this case, section F, which is 70 feet plus the 10 feet are what we're gonna to use to determine our longest measured run. So our longest measured run is going to be 80 feet. Step number two, we need to determine the total gas input required from the appliances in the system itself. Pretty simple. We are going to add up all of the BTUs of the appliances in the system. 45,000 BTUs, 80,000 BTUs, 90,000 BTUs, 60,000 BTUs, and 100,000 BTUs per hour. So our LMR, as we mentioned before, is going to be 80 feet. Our total gas load in the system is going to be 375,000 BTUs. Next from our diagram, we're going to determine what type of fuel that we're going to be using. In our application, we're using natural gas, but it could be propane, where we use the Annex uh, B tables. In our case, we're using natural gas, so it's Annex A. The system pressure, at this point, we're using 7 inches water column. And finally, the material that the piping and tubing system is constructed of. In our case, it's both Schedule 40 pipe and copper tubing. So we're going to pick the appropriate tables as indicated in the B149.1 codebook. So the first portion that we're going to size is going to be the Schedule 40 portion. So we're going to use table A2. We indicated already 80 foot longest measured run and 375,000 BTUs. The blow up at the top of table A2 indicates the maximum capacity of natural gas and thousands of BTUs per hour for Schedule 40 pipe and plastic pipe including fittings for pressures from 7 to 14 inches water column based on a pressure drop of 1 inch water column. So table A2 is the table that we're going to use for the Schedule 40 section of this example. There's the, the uh, actual table blown up. It's page 118 in your B149.1-15 code book. And then I've taken that table, shrunk it back down so we can read the numbers, and highlighted the 80-foot pipe length uh, section. So at the 80-foot code zone, we move across the highlighted area until we find a number of 375 or larger. 596 is the first value larger than 375. So when we go up to the top of that 596 column, you're going to see that inch and a quarter is the size of pipe diameter that we're going to utilize. So again, going kind of back, we're going to find our LMR. We're going to come over here in our length of pipe to the 80-foot section. We're going to move across. The first number you're going to see is 74, which is 74,000 BTUs. That would be half inch. You will see three-quarter inch would handle 154. One inch will handle 290. And finally, inch and a quarter will handle 596. Because we're in between one inch and inch and a quarter, we're going to go to the inch and a quarter for the entire Schedule 40 section of pipe in this application. So next what we're going to do is we're going to size the copper tubing uh, runs at this point. We're going to start on B. So unlike the previous examples, or unlike the Schedule 40 um, application, which was on YouTube yesterday, uh, we want to... We go a little differently on manifolded systems. So for the individual runs, we're going to use the length of the run individually and only the input of the fuel that that appliance has in that particular run. So what I'm meaning by this is for B, we've got a 45,000 BTU per hour appliance. That's all we're going to utilize for this example. B has a, a tubing length of 35 feet. We always want to make sure that we're taking that 35 feet. We also always have to add the 10 feet of Schedule 40 pipe because we always measure from the outlet of the actual gas meter itself. So in this case, our, our measured run at that point, or what we're going to calculate, is going to be 45 feet, and we need 45,000 BTUs per hour. So again, this explains that 
we're going to have 45 feet, supplying 45,000 BTU per hour. So we're going to go to table A9 to calculate the appropriate copper tubing diameter. Table A9, again, at the top, indicates maximum capacity of natural gas and thousands of BTUs per hour for copper tubing. So the other one said schedule 40 in plastic. This one is for copper tubing, including fittings for pressures of 7 inches water column to 14 inches water column based on a pressure drop of 1 inch water column. When you come down, we said that we had 45 feet. Well, you can see we've got a 40 or a 50 foot tube length that we have to concern ourselves with. We're in between table values. We're always going to go to the next longest, which is going to be your worst case example of gas delivery. Because we have 45,000 BTUs going to that appliance, when we get down to the 50 foot line, you can see that a 3 8 diameter tube is going to give you 15,000. A half inch diameter tube will give you 30. A 5 8 will give you 61. Well, because 45 is going to be between 30 and 61, 5 8 tube, which handles 61,000 BTUs, will be used for that particular tube B. So as indicated, 5 8 is going to be what we're going to use. Tube C is going to be calculated with 65 feet of tube plus 10 feet of pipe. So our total length is going to be 75 feet, so we're going to use the 80-foot code zone. Again, on table A9, searching for a value of 80,000 BTUs or higher. So again, looking at this uh, application, we've got our 65 feet of tubing going up to our plants with 80,000 BTUs plus the original 10. So we're looking at 75 feet, so our code zone is going to be 80 feet, and we're looking at 80,000 BTUs. So again, down at 80 foot level, we're running across here, and you will see 3 quarter inch will just handle it at 83,000 BTUs, but that works, so 3 quarter inch is actually the size we're going to have for that example. So we're going to continue and calculate tubes D, E, and F at that point. So I'm going to leave these examples up. You all should have examples of these tubing exercises uh, at this point. So I'm going to allow you to do D, E, and F. And once you're done, we'll come back and I will provide the answers for these applications. You can hit pause on the video and then uh, I will continue on. Okay, for section D, we have 61 feet plus our original 10 feet, so our actual pipe run is going to be 71 feet. Again, we're going to go to the 80-foot code zone with an appliance of 90,000 BTUs per hour. So at the 80-foot code zone, we look down again on our sheet. We run across here until we get a number of 90 or higher. You can see that 118, we're going to have 7 eighths inch tubing for that particular run. For section E, which is coming off of here, we're going to have 42 feet of tubing with 100,000 BTUs per hour, along with our 10 feet of Schedule 40 pipe. So 42 plus 10 is going to be 52 feet, which is going to take us to the 60-foot code zone with 100,000 BTUs, uh, obviously, of appliance at that point. So the 60-foot code zone, and we said 100,000. We just about make it a three-quarter, but unfortunately we're a little shy, so the actual answer there is going to be 7 inch, 7 8 inch tubing. And then finally we're going to have F, which again is going to be 70 feet, 60,000 BTU appliance, along with the 10 feet. So again, we're going back to the 80-foot code zone, looking for a number of 60 or higher in the 80 foot code zone and you can see 3 quarter inch will handle 83,000 so the proper tube size for F is going to be 3 quarter inch. There you have it. We're all set as far as tubing sizing applications on manifold systems are concerned.